the law doesn't always have to be dry. In fact, some laws on the books can be downright funny. Attorney Jeff Isaacs, who goes by the lawyer in blue jeans, compiled a list of laughable laws, and they are all real. Every one of them. Laugh with me. Check them out. Hey, Jeff, thanks for joining us. I never knew that laws could be so wacky. What made you want to start researching this? Well, it was real interesting. On radio and TV, there's 500,000 new laws every year and 2 million regulations, and some of them are pretty important, and some of them are pretty crazy. So I thought, you know what? Let's lighten up the law a little bit. I've been doing this a long time. Let's have fun once in a while, and that's what we do. Are we paying people in Washington and in state legislators to come up with these wacky laws? Well, we're paying people because probably uh, a few things happen. They either don't know what to, to uh, create as far as laws, so they get bored and they come up with personal things that are just out of this world and gives me and you and other people sometimes a little material to, to talk about Absolutely. because, quite frankly, it's nuts. Speaking <laughs> of material, let's discuss a few examples. First up, let's go to Nebraska. If a child burps during church, the parent may be arrested. you got to be kidding me. Well, they're not going to arrest the child. They got to go for the, you know, the adult over 18. And uh, what they have to do is, it gives new meaning actually uh, to uh, separation of church and state, doesn't it? I, uh, I don't know where they come by. That's just a one of many. But wait a minute, a kid burps. Period. <laughs> I have never been with a brand new baby who didn't burp every couple of minutes. Um, that's why you have one of those little spit cloths. So now we have a law that the parent could be in trouble. Well, I guess so. I guess they, they want real silence in these churches. So they now have the burp patrol that comes up and down the aisles in churches, and they go, hey, we got you. You are a fool. I love it. Okay, now let's go to the city of Portland. What are they doing there, darling? <laughs> well, uh, you're not allowed to whistle under water in Portland, Oregon. How does now, anybody know, Jeff? <laughs> well, how do you whistle underwater, first of all? I think what they're trying to do is keep you from either drowning or maybe they had those little whistle uh, uh, things that, that disturb fish and they were trying to protect the fish species. Either that or it rains so much in Portland, maybe that as the rain comes down, nobody should be whistling because it ain't funny. I don't know. Now, I have to tell you, this one is not funny. It is silly, but it yeah. just got on my nerves. The Los Angeles. Yeah. Domestic law? Explain that to the audience. Yeah, it's illegal for a man to beat his wife with a strap wider than three inches without her consent. Now, politically incorrect, absolutely, but it is weird and it's on the books. And I don't know if this is a, you know, I, I don't know where this came from. Okay, so wait a minute. If it is illegal for a man to beat his wife with a strap wider than three inches without her consent, if the strap is an inch and a half. Can he beat her? <laughs> well, as lawyers, you know, we're going to pick apart every word. So we can probably say the answer is it's ambiguous, so yes. And of course, the other side of the coin probably comes into play, too. How about a, uh, you know, where the man and the woman are reversed in roles? Uh, does that mean that's legal as well, since it doesn't address it? You know, what's, what's annoying is a defense attorney is going to have a good time with that <laughs> particular law, and domestic violence is far too serious for these right. dingbags who wrote this law to not have written it in a way that's unambiguous. Let's go to New Jersey. I was raised there. What happens in New Jersey? Well, you can have soup as long as you don't slurp it. Now, of course, you got to say it right. Sloop search, say, uh, or, you know, try to say that slurp about three soup, times. Slurp soup, dear. Slurp, slurp soup. soup. Yeah, I can't even say it once. But the bottom line is, again, uh, some congressperson or legislator got very bored and probably got irritated by somebody slurping their soup, and they made uh, created a law. You know, that is what is really annoying because of all the things that New Jersey needs some help with. The sloop, <laughs> the soup slurping police is not one of them. But you know what? Let's not leave out a little bit of our southern neighbors. West Virginia, what is happening in West Virginia? Yeah, well, no children in West Virginia can, can attend school with their breath smelling of wild onions. And in fact, it's real interesting. I did this on my radio show here in San Diego, and I got an email from a teacher from West Virginia, and she says there's some kind of 
rare breed of onions that, that kids eat and it will just destroy the classroom. She really verified this law and she said that, you know what, we can't have kids smelling of wild onions. So I, she liked that law. So wait, if the onions, if your breath is so bad, the kids <laughs> can't focus on geometry, is that in theory what this is about? Well, I guess they're just all wanting to run for the door, but they probably want to do that anyway at recess. So the issue is uh, it's a law. So now it's not just a rule. See, these are not just rules. These are laws in the books. Now, they're not enforced, obviously. Uh, at least we hope not. Can anybody actually be arrested for any of this, or are we just having a good time pointing them out? Oh, I think we're having a good time. I mean, you and I both know as in the law field that, you know, it would be very difficult for any of these laws to be effective. Uh, I, maybe there was a day that they were, but in today's world, I don't see it. I love the fact that you researched these nutty laws. Now let's research the people who put them into place, Jeff. <laughs> let's do that one together. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, I know you have more, and I'll ask you about it the next time. Thank you.